We got a bit of an instant reaction locked on NFL to Kyler Murray feared to have suffered a serious knee injury. Plus, we've got some uh, teams we are maybe ready to pour one out for. We'll talk about it. And as always on Tuesday, your Yike of the Week here on Locked on NFL. You are locked on NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Locked On NFL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you so much for making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day. I'm Luke Braun. Here with Ross Jackson, your usual Tuesday hosts. Today's episode of Locked On NFL is sponsored by Simply Safe Home Security with Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe. 24/7 monitoring agents capture evidence to accurately verify a threat for faster police response. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com/lockedonnfl to learn more. So, uh, we are recording right now in the middle of Monday Night Football. Uh, Cardinals going at it with the Patriots right now. Um, the outcome of that game doesn't have a, a huge bearing on a lot of things, but rough news, Kyler Murray, non-contact. Everybody saw it. ACL looking right away. Ugh. Uh, towel over his head, card out, just everything you never, ever, ever want to see, especially mm-hmm. with a, with a franchise cornerstone, cornerstone superstar like Kyler Murray. Uh, and Ian Rappaport, just a few minutes before we started recording here, tweeted out that the fear is that it is a significant knee injury. We have MRIs and more information to come. Uh, you get that update tomorrow on Locked On NFL if you want. Uh, but for now, it is seeming like barring a stroke of luck, this looks pretty bad for Kyler Murray and seems to be probably season ending, even if it isn't that serious because of the way the Cardinals season is going. Yeah. Um, that is just the cherry on top of the poop Sunday for the Arizona Cardinals, isn't it? I was just about to say, I was just about to say it's poopy. So it's, it's poopy. we use, we use the exact same word. Uh, it's just what it is. Yeah. It stinks, man. Like it's, it's, yeah. And you know, look, I'm sure Alex Clancy over at Latin Cardinals could be talking about this a ton all week. Uh, you know, oh, I'm now, sure. Yeah. Now you have the joyous pleasure of watching Cliff Kingsbury coach Colt McCoy in <laughs> Phoenix, and that's pretty much the only thing you got going for you. But this stinks because remember, there was all of that sort of talk preseason. Should the the Cardinals extend Kyler Murray? We were both very much on the pay Kyler train uh, around all of that, especially after they made the decisions to extend Steve Kime as well as extend uh, uh, Cliff Kingsbury, their head coach. Kingsbury, of course, now on a five year deal. No one knows how much money he's actually making. I can't blame them for not making that number public. But the estimation was that they were somewhere around five point five million dollars this year. And now you don't have your franchise quarterback and you are very likely about to drop to four and nine on the season, losing to a New England Patriots team that's, you know, six and six going into this one has been ups and downs. It's been okay uh, for them, but uh, this is very, very much. It's not just a cherry on top of the poop Sunday. It's a poop cherry on top of the poop Sunday. Yeah. Like a little dingleberry on poop. There. All of it stinks. Yeah. It's all bad. Um, yeah. As we're watching, it's like seven to six. Who knows who wins that game? But um, <laughs> it's. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh, five and eight. You did it. Like maybe you'll find your way into an in the hunt graphic if everything breaks. But it's not. I mean, this is just not the year the Cardinals thought they were going to have. You know, if you go back to halfway through the 2021 season, they were one of the scariest teams in the league. And then they collapse down the stretch. They end up like 11 and six. They get a wild card spot. They don't even win their division. They lose in the first round. And from that spot where you go, man, we just messed up some stuff down the stretch. Maybe we can. Um, you know, tweak a couple things and run this back. Felt like it was going to be an okay idea. And it's just, it's just, everything has just fallen completely apart for the Cardinals. Yeah. And without Kyler Murray, and they haven't had Kyler Murray for other part because they had the hamstring thing. Right. Um, It just makes you wonder what the direction overall of the team is. Because yeah. they they are at a bit of a crossroads. Do you 
keep this thing going? Do you say, all right, Cliff, Kyler, we're doing this thing again. And last year we just got a little unlucky with injuries and let's run this baby back. Right. Yeah. I, you could see an argument for that if you squinted right. But for me, I think these last four games are like for Cliff Kingsbury in particular. And I'm sure Alex has lots of thoughts on how this will go. <laughs> uh, but in, in these last few games, okay, you've got to finish out a season with Colt McCoy with a locker room filled with players that know it's over. Can you prove that you're worth something as a coach and that you weren't just getting carried by Kyler Murray making absolutely insane Mahomes plays all the time? Because that's what really those those Arizona Cardinals were in the beginning of the season last right. year. I mean, that was Kyler Murray running around doing insane superhuman stuff. effort type junk. Yeah. yeah, or just scrambling and converting third and longs, getting out of the pocket, heaving up crazy stuff. I think about like the Hale Murray a couple years ago. Right. Um, I think of a couple pl plays last time uh, when the Vikings played the Cardinals last year. He made some absolutely unbelievable plays, some legacy plays that you you know, get that are going to make the highlight reel every time anybody talks about his career. Um, do you have more than that cliff? Because <laughs> if not, you're supposed to be the offensive whiz. You should be able to get something that looks good against good for Colt McCoy. And I'm not talking about whether they win or lose the game. I'm talking, does this look like an offense that's worth a damn? Because right. otherwise it, it might be time to get somebody that's a little bit less of a whiz kid and a little bit more of an actual big boy head coach for adults. Sean Payton, anybody? No, I do think that there is like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there, you know, there's like, like, look, there are reports. Right? Matt yeah, Rule, let's go. Right. No, he's, in no, he's busy. Uh, but you know, when you look at the the who the Arizona Cardinals are supposed to be, this air raid offense with with you know Cliff Kingsbury coming in, making these daring decisions. He said, "Oh yeah, well, if I had the chance to draft Kyler Murray number one overall, I would." And he got the chance, and he turned around and he did it, and they moved on from Josh Rosen and that whole debacle. And then they moved into kind of like this new space where they you know, knew they weren't going to have DeAndre Hopkins to open up the season, but then they make the move to bring in Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown, unfortunately, goes down with injury, but then DeAndre Hopkins is activated six games in or after the six game, seven games into uh, the season after he served his suspension. And then all of a sudden, everything was supposed to come together for this team. And it just simply hasn't. And you're right. A lot of it is these splash plays that ended up winning games, losing games, making moments, losing moments, things like that. Like but, why were they winning? games right I don't, I don't think it was you cliff no no you're you're <laughs> absolutely right and you know and, and so i look at that i look at the and, and and i think that there's like another piece of it too that is how long do you maintain the status quo before you say okay the status quo isn't working and everything so how much longer do you really push this can down the road or kick this can down the road and say okay give, give him another shot okay give him another shot okay give him another shot if if you're not seeing any improvement year over year over year over year, I think at some point, like I would rather just like pull the ripcord and be ready to go uh, a, a lot earlier rather than later. Right. I'd rather be a year early right. than a year like, late on a to, situation like this. Like, what are you trying to build? You right. know, like, like what's what the is identity the of this goal? thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like, what is it supposed to be? If it's, this is Kyler Murray and Kyler Murray's team. Okay, great get him a whole bunch of great pass protection, pass protecting linemen, get him some speedy guys that can do the schoolyard thing, you know, like let's, okay, let's do this then. Right. Um, but, and, and this gets into also, are we doing this with Steve Kime again? Because yeah, it yeah feels he's part like, of that conversation too, for sure. Yeah. And listening to Alex Clancy on Lockdown Cardinals talk about it, it, it's, I think there's politics that prevent that from being as easy as you wish it was. Of course. So I think that's the way it might, that's what it might come down to here. But I think the way this Cardinals season has gone, being usurped by the Seahawks and 49ers, mm -hmm. um, and the only team that you've been able to leapfrog in that NFC West is the Rams, who have been totally decimated by injuries. Right. Um, I don't know. It just feels like it kind of feels like this reached this, this build of the Cardinals reached what it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And that's just not very good. Yep. Yep. So that's I exactly. guess it's time to try the next one. Yeah. Yeah. And it, oh, and it just got worse, just got worse for the last yeah. three and three quarters of a game. Well, really not the last mention, four games of the season, not to mention, depending on the extent of the damage, this could be jeopardize the start of uh, 2023 for Kyler. That's Maria. true. That we becomes are... the situation to monitor. Yeah, it's a good point. We are in December after all. So this could this could bleed into the 2023 season.
Um, it's unfortunate that it happened. It stinks. We'll continue to keep you up to date with everything that's going on with Kyler Murray here at Locked on NFL. Make sure you check it out Locked on Cardinals as well. We'll get you the, the extent of all of that. Um, sans anything around Kyler Murray, it is time to pour some out for uh, some more teams across the NFL yes. as it is a weekly just chopping block across the NFL. So we're, we're ready to pour out a few, and we're also going to tear our yike of the week. We've got those coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on NFL. And if you are checking us out, uh, don't forget today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online, number one source for all of the odds, lines, and props that you need. They've got news, they've got scores, they've got instant analysis, they've got podcasts, they've got articles. Everything that you need for your sports ratering information, you can get at betonline.net. Make sure you're going and you're checking them out today. All the lines all the way across the Locked On Podcast Network that we share on our shows, coming from Bet Online. They're the only place that we trust. They're our number one source, our exclusive online betting partners, and we hope that you will go and check them out as well. You're looking for a line on uh, this weekend's matchup for your favorite football team, your favorite basketball team. You're looking for player props, end of year awards. You're looking for auto racing odds and golf odds. They got those for you as well. I'm sure eventually they'll have pickleball uh, as well. I, they're they're going to have it eventually. I don't care what they say. So make sure you go and check them out. Bet online, betonline.net, where the game starts. Thanks again for making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day. For your second listen, go check out Locked On Sports Today. They talk about everything, biggest games, biggest stories. Of course, we got all kinds of World Cup stuff that's still going on. Oh, yeah. NFL, hockey, basketball, you name it, over there at Locked On Sports Today. Uh, let's pour some out. Um, let's begin by pouring some out. Pouring one out for the Arizona Cardinals. I think we maybe had already done that, but we never made a ceremony out of it, and it's right. time. Uh, yeah. so, and it had been time. So we hereby pour one out for the Arizona Cardinals. We talked a lot about why that is, but I am going to look at the other team currently playing on Monday night. As we record this, whether they win this game or not, I, th I might be ready to pour one out for the new England Patriots. I know that they might win this game and go to seven and six, and that would make them tied with the jets, but for the seventh seed. And mm -hmm. I do just believe in the Jets more. I know they've got this crazy quarterback situation. We'll see what's up with Mike White or if Zach Wilson is ready to come back in. But the Jets just have this star power. I think about like Matt Judon on the Patriots. Yeah. And I feel like the Jets have like four guys like that. Mm -hmm. And I just believe in them a little bit more. Um, so when it comes to finding those wild card spots, plus you have the Chargers who are surging in, no pun intended, with a very easy schedule down the stretch. Mm -hmm. um, not to mention the Dolphins and whoever between the Bengals and Ravens doesn't win the AFC North. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to see a path for the Patriots. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Are we doing this? Yeah, I think so. I think it's time. And especially if they find a way to lose this game, they actually just went down in this one, seven to 13 uh, because yeah. the NFL is weird, man. And so, you know, if, if they, especially if they drop this game uh, on Monday night football and, and honestly, like to your point, even if they don't, uh, I, I tend to believe in the Jets a little bit more as well, which is so weird to say. But like them holding the Buffalo Bills to 20 points in Buffalo this late in the season, having beat them early on, the Jets finding success in the AFC East finally. I love the, the, the coaching job that Robert Sala has done, which – like, don't get me wrong, does not mean that it's time to start pointing fingers at Bill Belichick. If you're talking about coaching here, obviously Bill Belichick is still the gold standard. But I, I love what the Jets have done. And that AFC East or that AFC conference is still so um, unpredictable in terms of what it's going to be. We thought it was going to get it was going to get mixy over there because of the AFC West. But it's really looking like the AFC North is kind of making this thing a little bit more interesting. AFC East making this thing a little bit more interesting as well. But yeah, I, right. I agree. It's it, it's really hard to see a path forward for uh, the New England Patriots. So I'm with you in pouring one out for the New England Patriots for sure. We will pour one out for the Patriots. It's interesting when it comes to the Jets, um, who I legit believe in mm -hmm. as a as a plucky wild card, the kind of team you don't want to face. Yeah, I'm thinking about being the Bills, right? Sitting in that one seed right now. You're gonna be the one seed. You're gonna get that, uh, that that buy. And I'm sitting there going, man, I really hope that the Jets end up as specifically the seven seed, because I feel like if they're not, and then they don't have to play the Chiefs because of that. Like I want the Jets to go up against the Chiefs if I'm the Bills. You know? Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. Because if they're not, let's say they climb up to the sixth seed, 
and they get to play somebody else and say they win that game, there's like a really good chance that your divisional round matchup is against the Jets who have had your number this right, year. Right. And you're going, right, right. ah, like anybody but that, like they know us too well, <laughs> anybody but them. Please give me Los Angeles, you know, like give me, yeah. <laughs> give me Miami, give me, give me the Patriots on a weird thing, but don't give me the Jets if I'm, if I'm the Bills. I'm rooting for like anybody else or get the Jets to go break on Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd be super worried about that. Um, we have poured out quite a few teams. It, it is honestly shorter at this point to list the teams we have not poured out, which are Bills, Dolphins, Jets, Chiefs, Chargers, Ravens. We did pour out the Bengals. That's not looking great. <laughs> yeah, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. What a turnaround uh, they've had. Joe Burrow has been awesome down the stretch. Yeah, and I like I did that at like their lowest moment, which was right after they lost right in front of my eyes to the Browns, and it looked super ugly, and it looked like they mm-hmm. just did, weren't going to have an offense without Jamar Chase, but they figured that out. Yeah. Um, and now Jamar Chase is back, and and they you know that didn't sink them the way that you maybe and- thought it would. Yeah, and they also turned over the offense a little bit more control of the offense over to Joe Burrow reportedly, and apparently that okay. has had you know a pretty good impact uh, as well. The offensive coordinator kind of working a little bit more with Burrow and Burrow getting a little bit more say so in terms of the way that the offense is going. And that like if if the reports around that are are factual and and and, and the timeline is correct, that times up with basically like how well they've played over the course of the last little bit. So shout out to Joe Burrow for making that leap. That's a big leap to make. And then the Titans are the only other AFC team. Mm -hmm. And then Eagles, 49ers, Seahawks, Vikings, Bucks. Uh, Oh, the entire NFC East, actually. I haven't poured out anybody in the NFC East. I am like a game away from pouring out the Giants. Yeah, I, they're on okay, a that's, crazy skid right now. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because that was going to be the my kind of like pour out watch for this week. Yeah, was they are be on the like Giants. a red alert. Yeah, yeah, because they, they're and they're also kind of in a in a similar situation as the New England Patriots, to where like the division is really good, so the oh, margin God. for error is so short, is so small, right? So we're talking about like the Bills, the the Dolphins, and the the Jets all being potential playoff teams. So one of those AFC East teams has to be the odd man out. And right now it's looking like the Patriots. That could be the New York Giants in the NFC East as well. Right. So assuming the 49ers keep it together and they don't lose the division, Mm -hmm. your NFC wild card would be the Cowboys. And then Commanders, Seahawks, Giants, uh, the Lions like win out maybe, choose two. Shout out Dan Campbell. (laughs) Yeah. Like that's that's your... uh, wild card and the giants their remaining schedule is at commanders at vikings Mm. Mm. home against the colts and then at eagles yikes woof that is gonna be they need to pull it together like now or they are not going to be otherwise i'm i'm feeling commanders seahawks and cowboys as the three uh wild card teams that's a pesky pesky wild card roundup right there too and, and I think, um, so, yeah, Commander's, like, going to San Fran, that'd be a pretty cool wild card game. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the way it feels to me right now. But I'll give the Giants one game. If they can go beat the Commanders, I think, they then that feels pretty good. But if they lose to the Commanders, it's it's over. Yeah, and the, the Giants, by the way, might be 7-5-1, but they're 0-3-1 in the division so far. So they are the only yeah. team in the NFC East to not win a division game. So this would be the right swept. time to do it. This would be the and, right time and that would it. be, they would lose the head-to-head tiebreaker with the Commanders because they would be 0-1-1 against them, right. which would matter right. a lot too. So they'd be like suddenly like three games out of a, like it'd be insane. Yeah, um, that's rough. We also have some yikes to talk about. So that'll come up next. Yeah, we're going to get to these yikes because there is a team in the NFC West that is putting a team that put a team in the NFC South in a blender in a way that they should not have been able to the legendary quarterback matchup that we all got to bear witness to this weekend. We're going to, we're going to share our couple yikes of legendary quarterback week. performances. That's out true. Of the That's NFC true. West. <laughs> we got a couple of them. We're going to get to all those as we continue on a wrap of today's episode of Locked On NFL. And today's 
Locked on NFL brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy. Made the way that, well, let's be honest, that it should be. It's you versus the house. It's you, your knowledge of your favorite players, favorite team, favorite sport, favorite league, the matchups, all the things that you know and love on a weekly basis. It's just you versus the house. It's not a bunch of mystery lineups all trying to, like, fight for some very, very small percentage of a big old pool. No, no. It's you versus the house, and you put your money down, and if you pick two to five players, all you have to do is project whether or not they come in at more or less than their prize picks projection. You get those right. You can win up to 10 times that entry that you put down back just like that. That simple. And you can do that for the NFL, NBA, MLB. This one actually does have pickleball already. Prize picks ahead of the game. Yes. So go and check that out. Esports, all of it. <laughs> all of it you can find. And people find it like CS to Go Futures. It was awesome. Yeah, it's they have some super, super dope stuff on prize picks. So make sure you go and check them out. Get involved with all of it. And don't forget. You can get a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 by simply using the promo code Locked On L O C K E D O N. Nice and simple. Just use the promo code Locked On at PrizePicks.com or by downloading the Prize Picks app. And you put down $100, they'll give you $100. Put down $50, they will give you $50. That's simple. 100% instant deposit match of up to $100 with promo code Locked On. All right, it's time for. A couple of yikes. Just a couple. Just like one or two yike, like lonely yikes. So the yike. Um, one, one like, one yike a piece. Just a one yike. One yike a piece. There three we go. Times. All right. So why don't you do your, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a segment we've been doing all year. Things that made us say yike, yike. Uh, for the week. So yep. Ross, what made you say yike? Here's week? what made me say yike this week yeah. all right i'm gonna if you're watching on if you're watching on youtube don't forget we're also on youtube as well as over on all the audio platforms as well but if you're watching over youtube i'm gonna bring up a tweet for you don't worry if you're listening i got you covered this is you a tweet from one. yes that's right i learned how to read at least a fourth grade level yes yeah i literally learned how to read today so i could do this <laughs> uh <laughs> This is from uh, Brian Peacock at BD Peacock. He's one of the hosts of Locked on 49ers. And he tweeted, pretty amazing that Tom Brady got to see Joe Montana, Steve Young, and Brock Purdy in person. The legend, Brock Purdy. So my yike this week is simple. Tom Brady in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is getting beat. Beat. I'm not even talking about, beat. listen to me. I'm not even talking about how they lost a little bit. They got whooped. Yes. With the HWH. Molly Hwalloped. <laughs> With the HWH. Whooped by seventh round rookie Brock Purdy in the San Francisco 49ers. First of all, applause, applause, applause to Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan, it doesn't matter if that man is coaching for Trey Lance, if he is calling plays for Jimmy Garoppolo, if he's calling plays for Mr. Irrelevant. Literal Mr. Irrelevant. He can put together a game plan to win. You watching, Cliff? Because you should be. This was a Could you imagine big old... Kyler in a Shanahan offense? Oh, oh, man. oh, yeah, with somebody that knows how to put an offense together. Woo! <laughs> that would be a lot of fun to watch. That is, that is for true. Um, yeah, man. Just yike. Yike. And Tom, remember Tom Brady and Tampa Bay Buccaneers came off of this team back here on my wall. Blowing a 13-point lead at the end of the game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Monday. Turn around on Sunday and got molly whopped by Brock Purdy and the San Francisco 49ers. My friend, that, that is a yike. It's like outside of that, it, like 118 of the last 120 minutes of Buccaneers football has been a <laughs> horror show. Uh it's so the NFC South is wild. It's so bad. The like Panthers that's, are a that's, game out of it, and they've like actively tanked. Yeah, they like they fired their head coach. They traded away their best player. They cut a quarterback. Like they are not interested in <laughs> winning. They're like thinking about the draft and rebuilding, and they're like, wait a minute, you ever, oops, you ever, we won the division. You ever seen an episode? You, you, you ever seen an episode? <laughs> You ever seen an episode of South Park where they all play baseball and they all try to lose because they don't want to go to the finals or they don't want to go to state championships? And then from state championships, they'd have to go to nationals. And they're like, no, nah, man, we hate baseball. We just want to lose. That's that's the Carolina Panthers right now. It's Carolina Panthers are like, yeah, they're like, no, no, no. Yeah, everybody in the NFC South is like, no, 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 we're good. We're done. We'll, we'll play the games that we have to play. 
but we're not trying to go to playoffs because then if we go to playoffs and then we accidentally win in the playoffs, then all of a sudden we got to go and travel somewhere else. If we accidentally win there, then we got to go to the Super Bowl. We don't want all that. We just mm-hmm. want to stay at home. We just want to be done before the winter or, or before, before the, the, Nobody yeah, wants before the winter sets in. Nobody wants to do it. And uh, the NFC South, no other team in the NFC South will let the other teams die. So you're, you cover an NFC South team, allegedly. <laughs> um, would you rather the Saints win out, steal the division on tiebreakers, die against Dallas at the Superdome, but you get a playoff appearance, totally tank? Oh, you don't even have a first-round draft pick. What are the Saints nope. doing? Go win nope. some games. It's win right, the wide games, open. baby. Win, 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 win. That's all I would be about with them. Because yeah, you're right. They don't have the first-round pick. If they do get a first-round pick, it won't be anywhere. It won't have anything to do with where they finish because it would be in the Peyton trade if they trade Sean Payton. So I'm like, go and win. I don't think that – I mean, I know that they won't. I know that they can't. But, like, go and win and, you know, keep, keep everybody else in the NFC South at home in, in the playoff. Uh, uh, yes. One playoff. Do it one for yike, hate. One playoff. Do it for hate. Hate, hate, right. hate, hate, hate. But at any rate, the yes, the Buccaneers are like the, the division is theirs to take, but they have mm-hmm. to take it. You mm-hmm. know, like they can't finish eight and nine and then like lose out on tiebreakers to Atlanta. Like, <laughs> which by the way, Desmond Ritter coming in next week, so maybe there's a surge there coming. Ritter season. Um, yeah. Whew. Yike. Yike. Buccaneers. What's your yike? So I want to take you back like nine years nine to the years. Vikings game in 2013, Monday Night Football. Uh-huh. Vikings travel to New York. Now, this was the last year of Christian Ponder as a starter for the Vikings. You might remember that if you covered mm-hmm. the 2011 draft, total mm-hmm. draft bust, right? Mm-hmm. And Matt Castle was competing with Christian Ponder. Both of them were catastrophes. Mm-hmm. On a flyer, Rick Spielman goes out and signs a recently released Josh Freeman, who is having a really tough time personally. Things were not working out with Greg Schiano and the Bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, lot of lot of context there. Brings I like in where Josh this is Freeman. Going. Leslie Frazier was the coach at the time. Mm-hmm. He loved Christian Ponder. He was married to Christian Ponder. He was his handpicked guy, and he didn't like that there was a allegedly. I don't. This is alleged. <laughs> uh, he allegedly didn't like that there was a a new competitor for Christian Ponder. That it seemed like Spielman was super like hell bent on moving on from Ponder. So. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Um, so Josh Freeman, after like three days, <laughs> plays on Monday Night Football. He was in the organization for legit like 72 hours. He had yeah. no idea what he was yeah. doing. Started that game. One of the worst Monday Night Football games ever. Uh, if you Google Vikings Giants, gra- or if you Google Josh Freeman Gravity, you will see one of the greatest gifts ever created in the history of sports coverage. Um, just everybody pause the show real quick. And Google Josh Freeman gravity if you are not behind the wheel of a vehicle. Um, <laughs> and that, it was one of the worst qu- quarterbacking performances ever. Imagine losing to that. <laughs> because that's what the Raiders just did. <laughs> Baker Mayfield had 48 hours in the Rams organization. <laughs> He's been... He's he's changed teams twice in the last right. like what seven months. Mm-hmm. Dude was behind the eight ball of eight balls, yeah. and not only did you lose to him, you managed to let him make like a major comeback, ninety eight yard drive to go down. You let him do that. The Raiders are also the team that lost to Jeff Saturday, who had been the head coach for like nine seconds too. What are you doing? <laughs> They have conjured some of the most horrifying losses I've ever seen. And I'm a Vikings fan. And I watch 28 to 3 too. This is some of the most embarrassing stuff I have ever seen an organization endure. Incredible. Incredible. Just absolutely nuts. Yeah. I, I like I like a ton what uh what what uh our friend John Hickman over at Light on Texan said, which is Baker Mayfield put a game jersey on before the, before he put a practice jersey on and still won. Like, my God. Like, just incredible. <laughs> just incredible. And especially for a team like the Raiders that have been burned by defense so much in the last years. You know, yeah. I mean, this is such a sore spot for all the Raiders fans in L.A. that went to that game. Uh, which, that w- that's a home game for the Raiders, by the way. I know, like, the Rams right. and Chargers, like, SoFi is always kind of a home game for the road team. But mm-hmm. for the Raiders in particular, you're in L.A. It's a, yeah, it is. Yeah. 
it is his Raider country. Right. And it's what a just a gut punch. I don't know how <laughs> any of them can pick themselves off. I don't know how the Raiders show up to the next game after that happened without a paper bag on their heads. It's disgusting. Oh, yeah, it's bad football. It's bad football. Who they got next? They got New England, and then they've got they got yeah they got New England, and Raiders they got Pittsburgh play. up next. Oof. Oh yeah, top right. A lot of bad ball out there. A lot of bad ball out there. And a lot of it it is in Las Vegas. Y'all, we appreciate (laughs) you very much for taking the time to join us uh, for what was a a mostly, I'll call it a mostly hinged episode here on a Tuesday at Locked in NFL. It was mostly hinged. We got a little spicy toward the end, but uh, got my little South Park reference in for all the other 90s kids that listen to the show. Um, Or watch the show. We appreciate you very much, as always, for joining us for another crazy dumb episode of locked on nfl uh tomorrow it'll be less crazy and dumb but still crazy and still fun with james rapine and tony wiggins uh bringing you what i'm sure will be uh, a very very fun episode including the power rankings and of course more information on kyler murray as it becomes available uh luke braun at luke braun nfl ross jackson at ross jackson nola we're very grateful that you took the time to make us your first listen of the day here on locked on nfl don't forget for your second listen go and check out locked on sports today as well to get all of the news that you need around the world of sports around 20 to 25 minutes going beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes only the way that locked on can provide you can find it on the odyssey app youtube wherever you get your podcasts luke and i we appreciate you we say thank you we'll see you here soon for another episode of locked on nfl part of locked on podcast network your team every day